Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I've got a question for you. I want you all to tell me if you think that this makes sense, because I've been saying it for years, but most people haven't been getting it. Other people are trying to say it, but they're not saying it quite this way. So let's see if we can say it to where it makes sense. Your birth certificate is a copy. That's why you go to the vital statistics or county recorder or whoever it is you go to to get a copy of your birth certificate. So your birth certificate is a copy. That's why it's prima facie or prima facie. Either of the two words mean the same thing. By first appearance, it's a Latin English combination of words. Okay? Okay. So, because you're junk, and it is junk, so you really must understand it is junk. Because your certificate is only prima facie evidence, it's not a security. I know, I know, I know so many people were telling you that it was a security. It's not a security. It represents a security, but it itself is not a security. Why? Because it's only a copy. That's what the word certificate means. It means copy. It means prima facie. It means it may look like the original, but it ain't the original. That's what it means. Okay. <sighs> Glad we got that taken care of. Whew. Now, oh, you think the birth certificate ain't worth nothing? Oh, no, I didn't say that. I was just trying to get you to understand that it's only a copy. Okay, let, let, let's talk about worth and value. Now, let me explain something so y'all get it. Mama goes to the hospital to make a delivery. Who's she delivering something to? Uh, what's she delivering? And, and why is she delivering it there? Why can't she just keep it at home? Keep it in the closet. Anyway, why can't she just keep it to herself? Why she got to go deliver it to somebody else? Ladies and gentlemen, when a mother goes to the hospital to make a delivery, She's making an agreement with government. There is a contractual relationship there. That's why she has to sign admittance papers. Do you know that every patient in the hospital is an inmate? What, y'all didn't know that? Oh, come on now. Y'all should have known that. Hold on. Let's, uh, yeah, let's do this one. We'll, we'll, we'll do the chrome. We'll do the chrome. Hold on. Let me put y'all on pause. Ain't no need for y'all to be waiting for it to all right, now we're going to make this big so y'all can see, because y'all, y'all, many people don't understand what an inmate is and what an inmate is not. Uh-oh, if it lets me make it, there we go. It says a person who occupies or dwells within a dwelling house. That's right. The word came to be used to refer to temporary inhabitants such as a guest in a hotel or students in a dormitory. Okay? Now, Inmate means a person who's been sentenced to a term of imprisonment for violation of the law of the state. Now, that's what certain states have, but that's not what inmate means, y'all. Okay? Inmate does not mean somebody who is placed in custody for a crime. That's a secondary definition. A person who lodges or dwells in the same house with another, occupying different... I, I'm not even going to begin. Not, not even going to try it. Okay, now, let's see. Oh, that's the definition. This is a legal definition. Person can find in an institution as a prison or hospital. So when your mama goes to the hospital, she's an inmate. That's why they call her an informant. Don't believe me? She's an inmate. That's why she's called an informant. Okay, got that out of the way. Whew, thought it was going to take some time for y'all to understand, but y'all seem to get it. All right, now when she goes to the hospital to make her delivery, she initiates a contract called a birth certificate. That's right. She does the original one called the live birth record. Okay. She signs it. All her information, her age, her birth date, her name, her dress, everything, all of her information. She's the only one who's got information on there. She's the grantor. Okay, she's the grantor. Oh, yeah, it's a trust. I I'm sorry, that's what I'm about to prove to y'all, that the birth certificate is proof of the existence of a trust agreement where you're the beneficiary. That's right. And when you turn 18, you're supposed to do an affidavit showing you the registered owner of that certificate of live birth. 
Now, hold on now. Hold on, hold on. Rule, court rule 220. Minnesota court rule 220 is the same court rule for all the courts because the courts are uniform. I know, I know, I know. We don't have time to explain all that. You just need to take that with a grain of salt and hold on to it. Don't let it go. Okay. The doctor is government. The recorder is government. That's why it has all the government seals because it's a contract with government or a trust agreement with government. Government is the, pay attention, trustees. Government is the trustees. Got that? Okay, now hold on now. You the beneficiary. Now, how, why are you the beneficiary? Because the only thing on that birth certificate is your name and a date that it was created. Go ahead, take a look. Just your name. That's it. There's no other identifiable information concerning you. You the beneficiary. Lord have mercy. So those are your three parties. Trustee, government. Grantor, mama. Beneficiary, you. And your mother at the same time. Why? Because your mother operates as the custodian until you turn age of the majority. Now, if you don't believe me, go look at the document. Let's tell somebody to prove you wrong. Because you can't prove me wrong because I understand what a trust agreement is. All right, just thought I'd explain that because some people were not getting that. That's a trust agreement. So you can incorporate the property or the trust res. That's what res means, property. You can incorporate the trust res into a secondary trust because that trust agreement is not an irrevocable trust agreement. There's nothing, it's an implied trust. There's nothing in it that says that it's irrevocable. Okay, so you can take that trust and incorporate it. That's why when you turn 18, you get to get control of your securities. Don't take my word for it. Go read up on it, y'all. All right, um, I'm going to take about a minute and a half to explain something. Over the past two weeks, I received a call from about five people who said they tested some of the stuff I've been saying. They've listened. They've gone and done the research, y'all. And they're telling me about the success they've been having. A couple of them says, hey, I don't mind if you share it with other people. And I'm like, okay, I will. Um, some of them are still in the process, so I'm not going to share it with y'all because I don't want to mess up things for them because they're still in the process, so I don't want to interfere with what they're doing. And no, I'm not going to make money off of it. I'm not going to sell it and create some program and all of that bull. That's not what, what I do. Okay? They told me I could make the information available to you guys. I will do so explaining certain points. All right? Just that's it. These guys I speak to on the side, tell them what I believe they're missing and what I believe will enhance what they're doing. Okay? But that's it. All right. I said I was going to take a minute and a half. We're almost at that full minute. So what I was going to do is I'm going to let y'all go. The birth certificate is just evidence of a trust agreement, ladies and gentlemen. Document your, your trust agreement. Yeah, if you can get it authenticated, if you get it authenticated and add a number to it, the authentication document gives it another number. You just created a security and you don't even realize it. Don't tell nobody. Go and look up what it is to create a security, what the process is for creating a security. People, y'all y'all got to start understanding this stuff. It's it's too much of an effort trying to explain it to you guys all the time. All right, got to go. Y'all has a good day. Revederci.